This is the eSport Update. I'm Derwin L. Montgomery. Please remember to leave your comments and questions below and we'll respond. Keeping our citizens engaged and informed is a top priority. Both citizens and government play critical roles in the success of a well-informed community. I'm here with Carol Brooks, the Community Assistant Liaison for the East Ward. Carol, it's good to have you uh, to talk about how citizens engage uh, with the council member and, and, and how we carry concerns and issues back to City Hall for resolutions. And so you play a big role in how all that works together. So tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Thank you, Councilman Montgomery, for having me on the show and allowing me to connect somewhat face-to-face -face with our uh, citizens of the East Ward. Um, there are several ways to get uh, or to make connection uh, with your office as well as myself and the city services. And I think that the biggest and the old-fashioned way is by telephone. So there are several contact numbers that um, we are accessible by, and that is calling your office at 336-245-1088 or calling me directly at 336-462-2341. But once you make that contact with the Community Assistance Liaison, what then happens? Um, we are basically the conduits between the citizens of, in this, in this case, the East Ward, but the citizens of Winston-Salem and the city services. Um, we are here to be able to help you navigate through city services to make sure that you're getting the service and the level of service that, um, you're, ex that you're expecting and that it's our commitment to deliver. And those concerns range from anything under the sun uh, that is in the wheelhouse of city government and sometimes things that are just absolutely out of the wheelhouse. But there's a priority that if someone picks up the phone to call uh, uh, the East Ward um, that we want to make sure that they get a response and then also get connected to the proper services. That is correct. Um, so one of the most the most tremendous um, um, uh, for, for me is to make sure that people are getting timely service and that is um, when you contact me or this office, we are committed to getting back with you within 24 hours. And that is 24 hours on a clock, not 24 hours of business. So that could be several days if we did the calculations that way. But we are committed to getting uh, back to you and getting you a response to what it is you need um, in a timely fashion. So we get calls about sewer issues, water bills, um, uh, dumpsters not getting picked up, coal violations, meaning that there are houses that have issues and that are vacant and having challenges from dogs or cats that are challenges to the community um, because sometimes people just don't know where to go to get the answer. Um, and then sometimes they've already called and they get not gotten a, a timely response or gotten the resolution that they desire. And so that's where you come in and this office mm -hmm. comes in to try to help fill in that gap to say, hey, we have a citizen who has a concern and we're trying to work through that. So how does that work? It works just like that. Um, it basically is once we receive a call and, and if the citizens has indicated to us that they're having some difficulty, um, that is where we kick into real mode and in getting in touch with the directors of the department and making sure that that citizen response or, or request is responding to in a timely fashion. So they can also access um, via email. So mm -hmm. they, they go online and have access to email and they fill out the form online um, about a concern. That email comes to myself as well mm -hmm. as to you in terms of what that concern is. As well, people can call 311 and they can say, I want to get in contact with uh, my East Ward City Council member. And that call gets forwarded to you and mm -hmm. to our office. And again, it's, it's us trying to make sure that when there's concerns that come in, yeah. that they get to a person. That's um, correct. One of the biggest challenges I, that I dislike, and we don't have that challenge as much in city government, is when I call a service provider and I have to talk to a machine. Mm -hmm. um, the difference for us is that you get a live person that helps you talk that through is, your challenge. That is absolutely correct. Um, we Now, I can't commit to answering 100% of the phone calls right then and there because I could easily be with another citizen or yourself. Um, but. Uh, we do pick up those phone calls and get them in. We rouse them very fast. So well, it, one it, of the things we pride that, ourselves. That we also have the opportunity that it's not a robotic conversation. So mm -hmm. even if you leave a message, you're still going to, at mm -hmm. some point in time, you're going to talk to a real life person that's going to try to help you navigate your challenge and your issue. That is correct. Not only will you talk to me, there are very often times that I will drive to your residence to get more information and just to make that face-to-face -face contact because we do want to make sure that we're personable mm -hmm. and that we are... Um, giving our citizens the just A1 service. 
And so how are other ways that we kind of get information out to the public? Uh, if you want, if, if there's things happening in the East Ward, we do a few things to make sure that the East Ward citizens are engaged in ways that, you know, I, I don't knock any of my other council members, but we do some things that some mm -hmm. others don't do just to make sure that uh, citizens are engaged, particularly in the East Ward, just about what's happening, what's going on. What are some of those things we do? Oh yeah, we're pretty savvy with that and we're very consistent with it. We have uh, quarterly town hall meetings. Uh, they, if you will watch your mailbox, citizens of uh, the East Ward, we are actually mailing out the postcards that will give you the actual dates and times. We do four of them a year. Uh, one of them is specifically set aside for the budget, and that is when, once the budget is ready uh, to be presented to council, we actually present that to our residents and let them know these are the proposed uh, budget changes. So we do that in June. Um, and in between time, uh, there are opportunities that if, you're, if your neighborhood is having a community meeting or a neighborhood meeting, you want us to attend, just pick up the phone and call us. We're there. And so we do this show, the East Ward Update, but there's also a, a printed East Ward Update that goes out as well. What is that? A newsletter. Uh, All right. Thank you for the reminder. We actually, in addition to that, we actually um, have a community newsletter that also uh, coincides with, usually with our town hall meetings, it's quarterly, um, but that is another way. And the good website. Uh, our website uh, is there. If you go into the city's website, log into your page, a lot of times we'll have the information there as well. And so it's, it's always good to be able to have dialogue with the community. And so being able to um, engage with the community in a way that they can not only share their concerns, but also be able to um, have some conversation back. Because at the end of the day, sometimes there are questions and concerns that are out there that are just for understanding purposes, to understand what's going on. So the town hall meetings, the newsletter, um, being able to go out to citizens, um, community neighborhood association meetings. These are opportunities for the community to engage with their local government. My job and, and your job is not to advocate on behalf of quote unquote city government, mm -hmm. but to advocate on behalf of the citizens in the city of Winston-Salem and their concerns to ensure that city government works for them and works on their behalf. And sometimes that means that there's a concern that comes up from a citizen mm -hmm. and we may have a policy in place, but that policy may not fit um, the needs of, of the people. So what that does for me is that allows me to advocate that maybe we need to make a policy change so that the citizens are better served by what's happening in the community. Yes, and you're absolutely correct. And you're very good at that. Um, we've had many examples just over the last couple of months, um, uh, specifically around the bus route changes. Um, there are you know, citizens that are not as comfortable with some of the changes that we've made. So that they've called our office and we were actually able to, in some cases successfully, um, make some of the changes that they have requested. So uh, that is absolutely true. So for you, as you continue to work um, and, and engage in the community, communicating with the community and responding, what are some of the ways that you would encourage citizens to do? What are some of the things you would encourage citizens to do if they want to continue to engage or to have concerns? What, mm -hmm. what would you in encourage them to do? Oh, I think the, the biggest thing is to attend the town hall meetings. Um, that is where you get the opportunity to receive an update um, from you as, we, as the things that have happened in between quarterly town hall meetings. But that is the place that you can actually engage. It's a Q&A session. You can get the FaceTime, the one-on-one -on -one time with your council member, and any of the uh, directors of the city would be attending that meeting. So if you have any questions, I think that's the biggest thing. And in, that, and in those settings, we do it in a way that we can capture everyone's questions. So mm -hmm. if you're in the town hall meeting and you have a question, we do comment cards so that not only do you ask that question, but we have a person that we have the documentation of that question so that we can have follow-up follow -up. for mm -hmm. that person. So that you just don't stand up in the town hall meeting, ask the question, um, it get responded to then, but you get some follow-up in terms of being able to respond to that. What's mm -hmm. it, what else were you going to say? Um, the website. Yep. Um, Keeping in, keep in, in touch with, uh, with the website, using that as your um, leisure reading. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a uh, section on our website that will allow you to register uh, once you log into the city of WS backslash registration, uh, you're able to put in your information there. And as we receive updates, uh, as changes are made, those updates are automatically filtered to you um, based on your information. So we, we have a great opportunity for citizens to engage with, with this office. Um, 
uh, very intentional about making sure that, that people get responses um, and resolutions to their concerns. Um, sometimes the, the resolutions are not always what I desire, what the citizen desires, but I think a lot of people respect the fact that their concerns gets, gets worked on and you play a vital role in that process. And so thankful for what you do every day on behalf of the citizens of Winston-Salem. Um, and in particular, uh, we're grateful for, on behalf of the over 20,000 people that call the East Ward home, uh, they're grateful for the work that you do on behalf of their citizens as well. So again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being present with us today. The almighty East Ward. All right, appreciate it. That's the East Ward Update. I'm Derwin L. Montgomery. Remember to leave your questions and comments below and we'll respond.